Parks Casino is so close, you can get lucky in no time. With hundreds of tables and thousands of slots, you're closer than ever to winning. You are great. Parks, Pennsylvania's number one casino. Get lucky in no time. Classic Rock 102.9 MGK. I am happy to say that once again, Don Felder is in the yeah. studio with us. Hey. Good morning to you. Hey, John. It's great to be back here in Philly, buddy. It, it is It is always good to see you, but but you know what? I, I, and, and we've been together enough where I begin to realize I'm sort of running out of things to ask you, <laughs> right? You know, that, you know so, so what I did was I, I thought we would try something brand new today okay. called Wikipedia True or False. Uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right? All right? Okay. All right? That sounds good. So, so, so I just want to make sure that all of these things are absolutely true. You are Donald Williams. Felder? Uh, yes, that's yes, what it says uh, on my license. Uh, okay, fine. All right, so <laughs> one for the internet. All right, one for the internet. Okay. At 10 years old, did you acquire your first guitar by trading a friend a handful of cherry bombs? That is indeed true. Wow. Yes. <laughs> that's right. Okay. Pretty cool. All right. Your first band was the Continentals? Yes, sir. Stephen Stills was in that band? He was indeed. Have you ever performed albums on albums by the Bee Gees? I don't know. That was in the 70s, and a lot of my memories from the 70s had the smoky kind of haze around them. You know? Yeah, I think I did. I did. Uh, Diana Ross? Absolutely, yeah. Right. Barbara Streisand. Barbara Streisand, yeah. All wow. of their facts are correct, wow. ladies and gentlemen. Now, could you please explain to me this? He looks bewildered. He does. Right? He does look bewildered. Now he's liking it. Oh, here, maybe maybe it'll make more what sense. Happened? How about like this? This might help more. He's got it. <laughs> <laughs> he's that bad into it. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> Wow. Can you explain the Mond is it Mondri or Mondi 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 Quintet the, the Mondi Quintet, Mondi Quintet. <laughs> right, right well it, it sounds like we were fans of the Yardbirds yeah, absolutely <laughs> yeah you bet yeah that was kind of the during the British invasion and uh -huh. we were doing kind of a lot of regular old rock and roll stuff and at the time everybody wanted to sound English and Beatleish so uh -huh. we wrote that song actually recorded it in a studio that we paid for ourselves uh -huh. pressed up five hundred copies and we went around the radio stations much like this, like this delivered the record did some interviews played in some of the radio stations ourselves in like a little tiny room over uh -huh. there just for promotion and we had a regional hit in the southeast in Florida Georgia and Alabama and it was like wow we're stars <laughs> and then we went to New York City and nobody had ever heard of us <laughs> <laughs> yes, that that is the, the the Mondi Quintet, and I'm not alone. The first thing I was playing is uh, two's better than three. That's right. right? Yes. Now, which was the A side, which was the B side? Uh, or were I'm they not both alone. separate? The, they were both separate. They were separate. Yeah. Uh, okay, uh -huh. right. Yeah, that comes from an album I found called Psychedelic Florida. Oh really? <laughs> <laughs> so well, I had to disagree with Bernie when he wrote that <laughs> song. Two's better than three. Three can be very interesting at times. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, 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 wait, wait. Wow. Bernie Bernie Layton was in that band with you? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, I didn't realize yeah, that. Cool. That was our first single we wrote, we recorded together mm -hmm. with me and Bernie and a guy named Tom Long was the singer on it and yeah, that was me and Bernie. So, so, so does does Bernie go to New York with you? How does how how do you and Bernie split? Because Bernie is what got you into the Eagles. Well, yeah, Bernie was originally from San Diego. His mm -hmm. father was a nuclear physicist. Oh my and god! And was hired by the University of Florida to start their nuclear research department mm -hmm, there. Mm -hmm. So he moved him and his entire family of ten kids. Oh my to god! Gainesville, and Bernie was the oldest kid. And when he got there, he went to the music store and said, "Who's the best guitar player around?" And mother where I was teaching guitar, they said, oh, it's Don Felder. And so he called my home. My mom said, oh, he's coming back on a bus from playing a Little Women's Convention. I was 15, right? <laughs> a Little Women's Convention? Yeah, and I'd ride the bus. How young he started. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, anyway, so when I got off the bus back in Gainesville from this little show, there was a guy there that met me and said, hi, I'm Bernie. And I called your mom and she said I could come pick you up. <laughs> 
<laughs> okay. So okay. I got in the back of his car, because I didn't have a car at the time, and he had a great flat top guitar, came into my back bedroom and sat there and just played bluegrass guitar out of my mind. I mean, mm -hmm. it was just unbelievable. I didn't even own an acoustic guitar. I had electric guitars. Uh -huh. He didn't own an electric guitar, so we went to the music store. I bought an acoustic guitar. He got an electric guitar. We started trading each other, teaching each other our expertise. So we jo he joined this band, which was called the Continentals, after Stephen Stills left the band. Bernie replaced him, and then we decided... Ah, that's kind of an old name. We got to go uh, British Invasion and write mm -hmm. new songs, and off we were going. And that was the result of the, that. Uh, wow. The Mondry Quintet. All right, right. Might be the only person during the invasion years who went with the name Quintet. <laughs> <laughs> and, and on our business card, it said we played for quilting bees and funerals. <laughs> <laughs> Now, now, when you were at that guitar shop, wasn't Tom Petty one of your students? Yeah, I. Uh, I can't that's believe insane. what came out of this area. Yeah, it was it was really bizarre. There were so many people in that area that were like in battles of the bands together. And mm -hmm. like I said, I taught Tommy in this music store called Lippa Music, and he was playing bass in this band called the Rucker Brothers Band, and. He didn't want to play bass. He wanted to play guitar and uh -huh. front the band, right? And so he came in with this little guitar and wanted to take lessons. So I started to teach him in the store. Went over to a couple of his rehearsals, and he had two guitar players, Rodney and Ricky Rucker. Say that fast <laughs> <Wow>. three times. <laughs> anyway, and they would just thrash artlessly. Just, <laughs> you know, so I said, okay, one guy has to play rhythm, and one guy <laughs> has to play lead. <laughs> kind of like organize some of their arrangements and stuff. And uh, so Tommy eventually got good enough on guitar, where one of the Rucker brothers, the worst of the two, started playing bass, and Tommy started playing guitar. And so went to a bunch of his shows and uh, just kind of helped that little band. And kind of get organized. <laughs> now, 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 Bernie is your intro to the Eagles. Bernie is in the Eagles when and, and brings you along, brings you in one day. Did Bernie quit or did you get him fired? <laughs> no, no, no. What, what happened was Bernie, after uh, after the Monty Quintet, he moved back to California because uh -huh. he loved the music and the weather and everything. And North Central Florida was really the middle of nowhere. <laughs> and so uh, I moved to Manhattan, put together another band, moved from New York, and he and I stayed in touch. And every time he would come through New York or Boston, wherever I was living, he would be in a band called Hearts and Flowers or the Flying Burrito Brothers or some of these California bands. Right. We'd see each other and hang out and play in the hotels or backstage or whatnot, just staying in touch. And he kept saying, you've got to come to California. That's where the music business is. It's not in New York and it's not in Boston. And finally, I went, oh, okay. They came through. They came through Boston, and they were the Eagles had just formed. It was their first tour, and they were opening for Yes. Mm -hmm. Now, what a strange combination! <laughs> Young cowboy rock band opening for Yes, the psychedelic like you know. Anyway, so I went to see him. Went backstage, saw Bernie, and Bernie and I were playing guitar backstage, having fun together. And Don and Glenn were there watching us do what we had been doing for years. Mm -hmm. And I think they were quite impressed with what I brought to the table. So when we got back to, uh, they got back to town, Bernie said, you got to move out here. So I, I invested just about everything I had and rented a U-Haul trailer, put everything in it that I owned, drove with my 65 Volvo 122S Ooh. from Boston. Was that the bubble-shaped one? Yes. 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 <laughs> really attractive-looking. Oh, yeah. oh, yeah. I really got the girls. I thought. Oh, yeah. Right. <laughs> and you had a better chance of riding in on our hippo. <laughs> <laughs> but I drove from Boston just straight across country to L.A., and when I got there, Bernie was the only guy I knew. I slept on the floor of his apartment uh, for a while, and he left two days later to go on the road with the Eagles. So I started looking for an apartment, putting stuff together, wound up playing with Crosby Nash, ironically mm -hmm. enough, being Stephen Stills and doing his parts and things right. and stuff, kind of filling in for Stephen. And then uh, I got a call to do a session with the Eagles. They wanted me to come in and play slide guitar on this one song called Good Day in Hell. So I went in and just took my guitar and amp and played on this session with him. And I'd known them and jammed with them and hung out with them as friends. The next day, I got a call from Glenn asking me to join the band. Now, my wife was pregnant with our first child at uh -huh. the time. And I was making $1,500 a week playing with Crosby Nash, which was, that's a lot of that's money. a lot of money at that time. In sure. 1973, right. wow. 74, mm -hmm. that's a lot of money. 
And uh, the rumors I had heard from Bernie about the instability of the Eagles. <laughs> 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 Quitting and yelling and freaking out and throwing and dumping beers and you know all this stuff. I, I was like, do I really want to leave this high-paying gig to go with this band that may break up tomorrow? And I went. Uh, I, so I went and had a conversation with Graham Nash, and I sat down and said, "What do I do?" He says, "Don, that's a great opportunity. You got to take the risk and go for it." So I told him I couldn't play with him anymore. Joined the band, went into the studio the next day. And it was exactly what I thought. I was yelling and screaming, <laughs> people slamming doors, and I went, "Oh no, what an idiot I've been!" <laughs> they are uh, the, the the Eagles are about to get inducted uh, into uh, get the Kennedy Center honors. And uh, uh, do you know about the petition? Uh, I, I've seen it just once briefly. Beca yeah. Because as it stands right now, uh, Don, Glenn, Joe, and Timothy are going to be the only ones who are receiving this award. But really, I mean, you know, you know, you should be there. Randy should be there. Bernie should be there. But most of all, you should be there because th you brought the rock and roll to the Eagles, and it was and it was all of those years that you were in the band that the Eagles really soared and became this insanely huge act. And and uh, w what we're going to do is we're going to put a link to that petition up on our Facebook page and up on the station page and make sure that the world knows that Don Felder ought to be getting one of those Kennedy here, here. honors. Here, here. Yeah. Yeah. Don Felder is our guest. One of these nights is what I've got here. Anything you want to say about this song? No, no. Uh, it's just so much fun uh, actually recording this tower part. Uh, Don and Glenn had gone down to KLOS in L.A., which mm -hmm. was a big radio station. Sure, at the time. Yeah, we, yeah. we had prearranged a call into the studio that they were going to check on how I was doing writing this uh -huh. guitar solo. So Bill Simzik and I sat down and said, okay, let's record something that starts out kind of okay and about three bars into it, there's a sour note and a couple of bars, there's a couple of <laughs> more and it just <laughs> falls apart so when they call in we'll play them this and sure enough they were like oh that sounds really good uh <laughs> what? What? And we're live on the air. And so then finally we uh, played him the real, the real solo. <laughs> Classic Rock 102.9 MGK. Don Felder, yeah. our guest. 